Hi, we're going to be continuing today in our study of the book of Revelation. We only have two chapters to go. These last two chapters are two of my favorites in the whole book. And I'm going to be reading today from the New King James Version and then uh, give you some of my comments afterwards. So let's get started. Now I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and there was no more sea. Then I, John, saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from heaven saying, Behold, the tabernacle of God is with men, and he will dwell with them, and they shall be his people. God himself will be with them and be their God. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There shall be no more death, nor sorrow, nor crying. There shall be no more pain, for the former things have passed away. Then he who sat on the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said to me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. And he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega the beginning and the end. I will give of the fountain of the water of life freely to him who thirsts. He who overcomes shall inherit all things, and I will be his God, and he shall be my son. But the cowardly, unbelieving, abominable, murderers, sexually immoral, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars shall have their part in the lake which burns with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. Then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls filled with the seven last plagues came to me and talked with me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain and showed me the great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God. Having the glory of God, her light was like a most precious stone, like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. And also she had a great and high wall with twelve gates and twelve angels at the gates and names written on them, which are the names of the twelve tribes of the children of Israel. Three gates on the east, three gates on the north, three gates on the south, and three gates on the west. Now the wall of the city had twelve foundations, and on them were names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. And he who talked with me had a gold reed to measure the city, its gates and its wall. The length is laid out as a square, its length is as great as its breadth. And he measured the city with the reed, 12,000 furlongs. Its length and breadth and height are equal. Then he measured its wall, 144 cubits according to the measure of a man, that is, of an angel. Now, this city is going to be approximately 1,500 miles in all directions. That's what, what this measurement equates to. The construction of its wall was of jasper, and the city was pure gold, like clear glass, The foundations of the wall of the city were adorned with all kinds of precious stones. The first foundation was jasper, the second sapphire, the third chalcedony, the fourth emerald, the fifth sardonyx, the sixth sardius, the seventh chrysolite, the eighth beryl, the ninth topaz, the tenth chrysophrase, the eleventh jacinth, and the twelfth amethyst. Not sure if I pronounce all those words correctly, but... Gave it a shot. The twelve gates were twelve pearls. Each individual gate was of one pearl, and the street of the city was pure gold, like transparent glass. But I saw no temple in it, for the Lord God Almighty and the Lamb are its temple. The city had no need of the sun or of the moon to shine in it, for the glory of God illuminated it. The Lamb is its light. And the nations of those who are saved shall walk in its light, and the kings of the earth bring their glory and honor into it. Its gates shall not be shut at all by day. There shall be no night there. 
and they shall bring the glory and honor of the nations into it. But there shall by no means enter it anything that defiles or causes abomination or a lie, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. What an interesting chapter we have here. Verses 1 through 3. The fact that there is no more sea is evidence that the earth will not just be renovated, but will be completely different. This will give much more land space for people on the earth. The new earth will become God's dwelling place with the new Jerusalem as its headquarters. Verses 4 through 7. All of sin's effects will cease to exist, and there will be no sorrow or pain. What a glorious day that will be. All past hurts are forgotten and remembered no more. Verse 7. This is the same exhortation given to the seven churches in Revelation chapters 2 and 3. All who are overcomers will inherit eternal life with Christ. Those who faithfully persevere in devotion to Christ are overcomers, whereas those who do not overcome sin through repentance, they will be thrown into the lake of fire. The choice is ours. We choose either to follow Christ or to reject him. Choose to follow Christ with all of your heart. Verse 8. The fearful are those who lack faith in God and his word. The fearful includes compromisers who do not overcome evil. Unbelievers include those who never believed or trusted in God, and also those who have rejected his word, as well as those who once believed but abandoned their faith. The abominable applies particularly to those who claim to follow Christ, but do not obey his teachings written in the scriptures, and do not obey the voice of the Holy Spirit when he speaks to them. Idolaters are those who worship false gods or anything else in the place of the one true God. You know, there's many things that can be an idol. Uh, there's just so many things that people worship today, you know, material pleasures, you know, for one, and, and the list can just go on and on. Anything that takes the place of God. If, if something in your life is more important to you than God, then it certainly can become an idol. So beware of all idolatry. Liars include pastors who deny the truth of God's word. You know, some people may not think pastors would fit into this category, but again, some are not following God's word. Many pastors today claim that you can live however you want and yet still be a child of God. You know, the, the, especially with the hyper grace message, you know, where it te teaches because we're under grace, you know, no matter what we do, we're still going to be saved. But there's many scriptures that teach contrary to that statement. We must endure until the end in order to be saved. Okay, let's see where was I. Okay, again, this the these uh, pastors that teach that you can do anything you want. This again contradicts God's word, and they are leading many souls to hell. It's a very serious matter. Verse nine through twenty-one. The New Jerusalem is pictured as Christ's bride. For it is beautiful, just as the true bride of Christ is. 
the church is made beautiful through the righteousness of Christ and through his sanctification by the Holy Spirit. The twelve foundations likely represents the church as a whole, both Old Testament and New Testament believers. Gold speaks of divine glory, and the stones named are known for great value, beauty, and enduring quality. Verses 22 to 27. The New Jerusalem has no temple because God's presence fills the entire city. Sin is excluded from the city, and only those who are redeemed through salvation in Christ will be able to enter into the gates. The never-ending beauties of New Jerusalem are indescribable and are such because God's presence dwells there. <clears throat> Everlasting peace and joy awaits all who come to salvation in Christ. So if you do not know the Lord Jesus Christ as your own personal Savior, I invite you to ask him to come into your heart today. Ask Him to forgive you of your sins, to cleanse you, to fill you with the Holy Spirit, and to give you an inheritance into His marvelous kingdom of light. And if you've turned away from the Lord, you once followed Him closely, but you've drifted away, come back to Him today. Today is the day of salvation. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and we'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.